Just like the internet, it can be abused or used in a very positive way. I think social media can be used to get some great messages out to the public as well as uh, to the community at large. Like during COVID, I think it was great where kids can still stay connected. I think it can be used. I like the way that our administration um, puts out on social media the wonderful activities and accomplishments that our students are achieving. And I think in that manner, it's a great thing to have. Well, I feel like social media is a great tool for communication and kind of getting the word out and connecting people. It is a controversial topic as to why social media is seen in a negative way. I think there's just no shutdown. Like it used to, before social media, you could go home, close your door and be away from everybody. And nowadays it's just everywhere. It's always on your mind. I think we have a lot of kids who are on it. They see things that maybe are national based and then those national based issues become local based issues because we're concerned about what we're seeing online. Um, I think issues with kids um, is their digital footprint. I think they they don't really realize that um, it can follow them up, you know, it can affect your job and college and things like that. Um, a lot of social emotional, just people, you know, getting down on themselves because of what they're reading on social media about themselves, uh, as well as just uh, self-esteem issues. Many students find themselves spending a majority of their day on social media. Um, between like Snapchat and TikTok, I'm going to be honest, probably like six hours a day. Like I probably spend like six or seven hours a day on social media. Probably about like four hours. Social media has truly had an impact on the lives of students here at West Bridgewater. I feel that bullying on social media is really bad and it's excessive. Um, how toxic it is and like people's opinions and how they can like affect other people's opinions like kind of scary sometimes. I think there have been negative impacts um, because of students whether it's uh, trolling or the bullying or things like that. Welcome to West Bridgewater News, where some students and teachers are concerned about some parking lot related situations, such as the idea of assigned parking spots. We don't have tons of visitor spots. Um, we have a lot of faculty that come and go. Um, we, so the idea of if you had an assigned spot, if somebody came when you leave on Privs and you come back and somebody has parked into your spot. I would prefer assigned parking spots. I feel like it would just be a lot easier for everyone. I personally get to the school at like 7 a.m., so I'm rocking with first come, first serve. Some also have concerns about the driving of students and parents, as well as how congested the traffic can get. I would say the biggest parking lot issue is just when kids leave at the end of the day. They have to take a left out to that main road, um, and that's a problem. Kids drive too fast, parents aren't willing to let them in, and that's really the big issue that we have. It definitely gets kind of hectic at the end of the day when everyone's trying to leave all at the same time. Some students and faculty believe it would be a fun idea to paint or decorate a parking spot as a possible new senior incentive. For seniors, I, I love the idea because I love the idea of just um, taking pride in that and seeing the creativity. Um, for the logistical piece, that would be something that we'd just have to kind of look at to see the spaces, how many spaces it would take. Uh, but it's definitely something I'd be willing to talk to the seniors about. Yes, because I feel like it'd be really cool. And if you decorate your own spot, you get to show your own like individuality and like a little thing. If the parking spots were assigned, I think it would be cool to decorate a parking spot just because it adds you know, creativity and uh, character to the parking lot. When it comes to painting the parking spots, some people are split as to whether it should be allowed for everyone or just for seniors. I feel it should be only open to seniors because it's like a little senior gift like, hey, you were here for this many years, now you get to decorate a little spot and have a little area for yourself. I definitely feel like it should be open to just seniors. I feel like it kind of goes along with like senior priv privileges, something you like earn as you get older. Um, and I think that's like such a fun thing to do like your last year of high school. That's all for the parking lot. Next up is some power block information. Thanks, Nora. 
At the high school, we have a new 8th grade math teacher, Mrs. DeLuca. We asked Mrs. DeLuca about her thoughts on the new My school. My coworkers, I really love working with all the people here. We asked her if she thought the students liked her. I do, I think so. I actually used to teach STEM at the Howard School, and so the 7th and 8th graders I've had in the past, so it was really cool to come up and now teach them math and be a classroom teacher. And so I've really got to foster those relationships that I built um, in the past few years with those students. So I think so. We asked her what her strengths and weaknesses were as a teacher and as a person. All right. I would say my strengths as a teacher are um, understanding the students and just um, being kind to them and just knowing um, that they're 13, 14 year old kids and just um, making sure I understand where they're coming from. I would say one of my weaknesses um, as a person and as a teacher would be overthinking, um, making sure everything is perfect or questioning um, if I said the right thing or if I answered the question the right way. And so just making, I definitely tend to overthink uh, a lot of things. We asked Mrs. Page her thoughts on Ms. DeLuca. We asked why she got the job. We asked who was employed before them. We asked some of Mr. Lucas' students their thoughts on her. That about wraps it up for us. Thanks, Cody. Seems like Ms. DeLuca has been a good fit for the school. For juniors and seniors, college is right around the corner and going to be a vital part of our future. Teachers and students informed us about how the school could better prepare the students for college. There is a lot of different curriculums to prepare the students for college, but a lot of students and teachers want to see more classes to prepare the students more for the real world. Yes, it does, but also, like, it doesn't prepare us for, like, things outside in the real world. world other than, like, financial, that's really, like, the, and Life 101. Those are, like, the only classes that kind of prepare us for the real life, but, like, thing, like other things don't really. Uh, the curriculum creates a rigorous set of expectations that uh, allow kids to learn all the skills that they need. Um, they're aligned with what the state asks us to do, which also come down from, you know, college's expectations as well. Um, a little bit. Like, there's some classes that are helpful, but I feel like they could do a little bit more. Both students and teachers have different opinions on what classes are most helpful to prepare the students for college and the future. Um, we could add more, like, inclusive, like, classes that are geared toward, more towards like life skills. So like we have life 101 and we have financial, but like it would be better to have things like, I don't know, like how to repair things or like how to do this or that. We're doing pretty well when it turns to college. You know, I, I, I don't think we're unfocused in that area. And if you were to talk about the curriculum basing kids for the diverse needs of potentially life and outside of just direct academ academia, we could probably tweak or have more co course offerings that help students manage life. Um, maybe like more classes based on like what to do in the real world. Like we have Life 101, we have financial math that like teach you about money 
in that stuff, but I feel like if there was more, it would help. According to the teachers at WB, there are many factors that contribute to college preparations for the students. So financial, <laughs> Life 101, I also feel like some more of like the elective classes seem to be like the more useful ones, but like math and English are still pretty useful, but like more of the elective classes are pretty useful. Uh, well, all students are required to, to do a good writing component, which if you can't write, you're going to have a really hard time in college. Um, the choices are there. Um, and it, it, all, it often comes down to if the student wants to make proper choices. And I think guidance does a very nice job. But uh, students need to challenge themselves. Uh, and that's how they're really going to get what they can, get the most of that they can get out of the high school experience here. You know? Probably Life 101, financial math, and maybe SIT prep that helps you like, get into college. Both the students and teachers have differing opinions of how the school could better prepare the students for college. On to Nora to see if the students use their power block time wisely. Usually I just do a, like my homework to like try to get started on it and then I just study. I'm more social in Power Block and I talk to my friends a lot, but I can still get stuff done. I'd say most days they're not very productive, but in my book that's okay. Sometimes we need to take that extra, um, extra half an hour to decompress. Many students and teachers have mixed feelings about the half hour time limit we get for Power Block and if it is enough time or not long enough. Uh, I don't think that 30 minutes is enough to be efficient. I feel it is a bit short because by the time you get going and you're on like a good roll for doing your work, power block's like over. I do think it is enough. Um, the fact that we get the 25, 30 minutes every single day I think is good. Power block is a great time to visit with teachers and gain some extra help on assignments or tests. I used to go to teachers, um, probably almost every power block, the ones that I needed help with. Um, I usually do maybe once every other week. Um, I wouldn't say a lot, but I do, you know, every week I get uh, probably two to three students coming in. Although Power Block is a great time for many, there are always ways to make it even better. I honestly wouldn't change anything about Power Block. I think, I think it's perfect. I think it's a nice break in the middle of the day. Um, less rules, you know, like let me kind of walk around everywhere a little bit, you know. Um, that we would be able to go see our friends a little bit more and like if we have to work with our friends on something, we could do it then. A lot of students and teachers can agree that having the same Power Block teacher all four years of high school is a great idea. Um, I actually really enjoy it. The, I've had, I think this is my second or third group of kids since we started doing that, and um, I really enjoy it. It allows me to get to know them a little bit better. Um, I tend to have a better rapport with them. Helps when I have them in 10th grade, so we already kind of know each other. Um, I really like it and getting to know um, a whole group of students really well. I think it's good because you get to know them better and better each year, and it's good to like build that relationship with them. Thanks, Tyler, for telling us more about Power Block. Let's hear about the best and worst of 2021. By far having a baby, definitely in July, having a little baby boy. Um, I had a lot of good things this year, but I think the highlight was my son turning one. So having him around for a whole year and getting to have a, being able to have a party with a lot of people and see everyone was really great. The highlight of my year was playing field hockey over the summer and like getting to meet new people and play with other players. It was amazing. Um, probably becoming friends with like different people and my summer definitely. Many have new hobbies to help them through this year. I found mushroom foraging over the past year, yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to like um, volleyball. Kicking, kicking footballs, yeah. Um, golf. No one could get through this hard year on their own. Uh, my family and friends, just leaning on them for support. My son, Hutch. <laughs> uh, definitely my wife, um, my kids in their own way of just being fun and enjoyable. My friends and my family. This year was crazy and many believe they'd change for the better. Yes, I feel like I've learned a lot of new things and like met new people. 
Yes, I'm going back for my master's, and I finished three out of four semesters. Uh, yes, um, I got more smarter and met more people. Yeah, I think that I started to focus on myself more and become a better person. Having goals and accomplishing them throughout the year can be very rewarding. Um, I think I wanted to read more, and I read not a lot of books, but more than usual, so that was enjoyable. Yeah, I got my permit this year. I mean, I want my music to blow up. I haven't necessarily accomplished it, but I'm working on it. 2021 was a good year, but not every moment is perfect. Um, low part of the year were just times when you really had to distance yourself from people, especially that were more high risk, like my grandmother and things like that. The pandemic things were looking up and they're, they're kind of not. And a lot of kids and people I know getting sick, uh, luckily not horribly, but still um, that's not really enjoyable to see. So. Mm -hmm. Part of this year was having to wear masks again. Yeah. Uh, COVID restrictions for things was pretty low. Depression and anxiety. 2021 had its ups and downs. And that's a wrap on TV2's G Block third episode.